right, boys and girls, um, with this paper that you should have had in your material bags, we are going to um, be creating an owl. So the first thing we're going to do is fold it, and it probably already was folded in half like this in your material bags. Get a good crease in there, and then we're going to cut along that crease. We're going to set this piece aside to work with later, and then we're going to start on this. This is going to be our background page. So we're making our owls, and our owl is going to need a perch to sit on. So we're going to start with a brown crayon, and we're going to draw that branch that our owl can sit on. Now I like to make it come as if it's coming off of the paper, and I bring it across. Then I kind of just flare it up a little bit and down below and I flare this down a little and then I'm going to put a sideways letter V like this so it looks like my branch is splitting on the ends and then we want to work to color it in. Now my tablecloth that I'm working on top of has a cool texture and so that texture is coming through on my coloring. If you had something with a cool texture, you could also color on top of it as I am and it would just give it a little more of a branch-like effect when we see those textures in there. Another way to do that is to draw some darker lines kind of coming through. They don't need to be straight, they can be kind of curved places to kind of show where that tree bark is. When you're done with your branch, we're going to work in the sky. We want it to look like there's wind. So we're going to draw with white and I know we can't see the white right away on the paper, but we will see it when we add color. For this, you want to press really hard with your white so that it gets a good coating. And I just kind of draw some wavy lines. to create that idea of wind in the background. We can put some swirls, kind of like some spiral shapes in there. And that also leaves the idea of wind in the background. Now, to get this blue, we can work with two things. We can work with watercolors. So if I'm gonna work with my watercolors, I want to remember to get them activated and I do that by dropping some water droplets into them. I'm going to let it sit for a little bit or I can work with my markers and if I color with my markers, if I press hard enough you can still see the cram lines coming through so you can still see those swirls. I can also um, make this softer and make this act more like watercolor paint by using water and a paintbrush over the top. And then we can really see those swirls and those lines coming through. I'm putting paper towel underneath because I really don't want to paint my tablecloth today. So there it is with marker creating the sky and we see those lines coming through there. And again, my other option is working with paint. Now if you are at school today, you can go ahead and draw your branch. You can draw your waves and if you really want to paint the sky portion, then you would have to do that at home since we can't do painting in the gym right now.
Okay, so I'm going to consider this done. I'm going to set this piece aside and I'm ready to work on the other paper. Now this paper has all of the parts for my owl, all of the things that are gonna build my owl's body so I can put it together on my page. Um, I'm actually going to explain what each thing is. This is going to become the owl's tail. These are going to be the owl's wings. These are the owl's eyes. And this here will become the owl's body. So I'm gonna start with my eyes and I just like to get the centers in there. I'm going to decorate my wings, decorate my body and my tail, and then we can put them all together. You can add any kind of patterns, any kind of designs into these items so that you are happy with them. And then when we are done, we will talk about how to assemble them together. Okay, so you'll notice I colored both of these parts with the same pattern because that is going to be the body and the tail for my owl. I did my wings in a slightly different pattern, kept my colors similar so that they blend. From here, I'm ready to start cutting them out. Now I've got all my pieces, now it's time to put everything together. So the first piece I'm going to start with is my tail. Get a little bit of glue on the back of it. And I want to place it just below the tree branch. Then I'm going to grab the owl's body. Get some glue on that and place that up top. He's got a little bit hanging. And it kind of overlaps onto its tail so that it looks like it is perched and the tail is going behind the branch. Add my wings. This is the bottom, this is the top. And they should curve in onto those ovals. And then the last step is the eyes. Now, to finish it up, we're gonna take a piece of this scratch paper. I realized I just forgot the beak. So you can take an orange crayon, draw yourself a triangle, cut that out, And I like to draw some little V's on here to show feathers. Because I worked with these blues and purples, I want to go with a 
different colors so that they stand out. Um, I think I'm going to use gray and we'll see how that looks. And so just by drawing some V's on the belly area, it starts to look like it's got some ruffled feathers. And with that, we are done with our owls. I hope you enjoyed these.